Hey, what's up? I'm Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how I composed this shot. Alright, so like most of you already know, we released an explosions pack which includes 20 unique blockbuster explosions which are really, really cool. And today I will be showing you how I composed that explosion into one of my shots and how you could do it on your own. So uh, if you have any kind of explosions, wherever you find them, it's kind of the same technique. I'm just going to run you through the project, how I tackled everything and so on. And if you're interested in buying the explosions, all the links will be in the description. Go and check them out, these are really cool explosions which will really blow your audience's mind, pun intended. Alright, so let me take you through this project in Adobe After Effects. Alright, here we are in Adobe After Effects and this is the final composite of my shot right here. So basically uh, what I've started with is this footage layer. Uh, as you can see right here. I didn't really like the sky because I actually recorded it and uh, the sky was actually overexposed, blown out as you can see right here, it's all white. I didn't like that part. So I did a simple sky replacement right here. If you wanna know how to do sky replacements, I'll put a link in the description to the tutorial on how to do the sky replacements right here. Very important here is to actually make sure that my footage uh, matched with the sky, so I did some minor color grading to the sky, so it actually um, yeah fits a little bit better together. So this was the original sky. I uh, did some curves right here to brighten it up, and then uh, with some hue and saturation, I tried to match the colors of my scene and the sky. So now it actually looks like um, it was originally created like this. This is the mask of my sky, so as you can uh, see right here, we have a Luma key right here, uh, which is, yeah, again, sky replacement tutorial if you want more information. Then next I added one of my explosions right here, the explosion 11 of our explosion spec, uh, which consists of 20 unique explosions. Right here I did some minor editing as well, so I added a curves right here uh, to add the contrast to actually make it match this, the, the scene a little bit more, and then right here I added our RSMB, which is um, yeah, just fake motion blur. You can't really see it right now, um, but in uh, motion, it's actually going to add a little bit more motion blur. It's not really that visible, so I'm not sure if it actually adds up in the effect. Uh, so yeah, you don't really need it to, to sell your effect. Then apart from that, I pre-composed the same exact explosion right here, and I added a black solid on there. So as you can see right here, and then in the original composition, I changed the blending mode to screen and press T on the keyboard. You see that I also lowered my opacity a little bit and I added a basic glow right here. So as you can see, and this is going to add a little bit of glow to my explosion to give that a little bit more impact. Next, I added an other footage layer, as you can see right here, all the masks. If I turn this one on, it's actually going to key out, um, well, the gate and all kinds of stuff. Uh, as you can see right here, so um, I just added a bunch of masks to key out the gate right here. Took a little bit of time, but as you can see, it really adds up to the effect, um, putting the explosion behind something. Then for the next layer, I also added this kind of mask, which is going to represent kind of um, the vegetation right here. And to create this, actually, originally it's created like this with a mask, so if I'm opening up all the information here, pressing M twice on the keyboard, you can see that I feathered it quite a lot, and I also added a mask expansion. Um, if we're going to solo only this layer, we're going to see that we get something like this. Then I apply the roughen edges right here to roughen the edges and to really make it look like the vegetation is just coming through a little bit. And if we're going to see that in the shot, it's actually, yeah, it actually seems like the explosion is behind uh, the vegetation right here. So you can still play a little bit. It's not perfect here, um, but as you can see, it actually looks like the fire is behind the vegetation using this rough and edges effect, which I really love to use in combination with masks. Next, I added an explosion right here in the uh, reflection for the water, which is also really important when you're working with light. Um, make sure that it actually reflects everywhere possible. Actually, um, this is quite an evening shot, so I could actually brighten up the floor and uh, so on. I didn't do that 
for this shot but as you can see right here um, I added another mask and the way I actually key this out is with an alpha mat right here on a new solid so I keyed everything out this way so I made a mask and make everything cut out right here and that's adding the reflection also again with the gate keyed out and that's really adding up a lot in the yeah, final composition I think. Showing reflections subconsciously just make it look so much more realistic in my opinion. What I also did is played with the curves and just dragged it down a little bit like the water is kind of taking a little bit of the exposure of the fire here away so this looks a little bit more realistic in my opinion. Then apart from that I added an adjustment layer with a final glow right here as you can see. Uh, still the explosion is very saturated in my opinion, very orange, very red uh, so later on I will also desaturate these colors. Then I like to add an optical flares from VD Copilot right here to my light which make it look a little bit more like it's been filmed with an anamorphic lens. It's just a personal preference and, and how to style my scene here. So uh, just a simple blue lens uh, with a screen on top of my light here and I just uh, animated the position to follow along right here and also the scale um, because the farther away the smaller the lens flare should be. And then on top of everything I added this uh, kind of color grade right here which I did with an unsharp mask. I set the amount to 35 and the radius to 25 which is going to make it pop a little bit more as you can see right here. And then for the Lumetri color in the creative tab I actually loaded a custom look right here uh, which is actually from our LUTs pack also available on our website. And yeah, that's just going to add a little bit of a like, final look to it. And as you can see, the fire also desaturated a lot. Uh, you can see all my settings right here. Just played a little bit with all these settings and that's it. Then I also added a solid layer here, uh, which is also set to screen and has like this kind of orange tone to it just to match the explosion a little bit more with my scene. Uh, it doesn't do much, but I think um, it kind of brightens it up a little bit and gives it like more that mood of the color and that the explosion is actually casting. And then finally I added a screen shake right here, uh, which is with the wiggle preset uh, that you can also download on our website. Uh, just starting the initial shake right here and then just ramping off um, yeah, the more in time. So actually adding a little bit of screen shake is also going to sell the effect of an actual explosion happening. Because if an actual explosion would be to occur and you would be a cameraman, I would bet you you can't hold your camera still. It's going to move because of the shock of that explosion and that also sells the effect. And also if your masks aren't perfect and stuff like that, you can hide a lot of that just adding a little bit of screen shake. So subtle ways to improve your video as well. So this was the original shot and this is the final shot with the explosion. And yeah, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Well, it's not really a tutorial. It's more like an overview of my project. But many people were wondering how I did this. So um, I tried to explain it very shortly, very briefly. Um, but just taking you through the project. Because it would take too much time to actually go through this uh, step by step. Especially with masking on all these things. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a like. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And then I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.